Welcome back everybody. Another great day at Blueprint Autosports, even though outside it's fucked up. Uh, yesterday I think it was like super sleeting and all that stuff. People bust their ass, including myself and my coworker. And we're like, you know what, fuck this, we're not, we're not coming in today. Um, <clears throat> so, we are back today couple of shop updates uh, he's gonna be tuned I believe either tomorrow or Friday we got everything buttoned away we did try to tune the chupacabra his ignition coil started failing at 27 psi he had the GTR calls for a very long time I'm gonna show you what's wrong with them a little interesting thing uh, another car that had an issue this is Yoshi's car our, our tech um, he has a hardware kit with 450. He's been running fine for a couple of years. All of a sudden yesterday, just like it, he came to work and now as soon as he came near the front office, it wouldn't work. Um, the car doesn't tur uh, turn on or stay on once it does turn on. Looking through everything, we noticed that the f as soon as you turn the car on, the fuel pressure drops after like, you know, 30 seconds. Looked at everything, the plumbing is good. As it turns out, uh, since he's hardwired, uh, I just had to change the load uh, of high pressure and low pressure, I mean, high voltage, low voltage fuel pump circuit. And you know what, we shouldn't have to do that because none of these other cars we had to do. I don't know what the fuck happened to his car that I had to do that. Um, Trailblazer's tuned, he made like 635. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on that. And then um, his brake booster took a shit on the dyno, lost brake. So now like when we're driving, he, you know, when we press the brake, it just, the car shuts off. So we gotta fix that. Today, however, we are tuning Eduardo. Uh, oh yeah, the GTR coils. See these resistors, they're super rusty. And inside, I don't know what happened, it's also rusty. Uh, there's rust everywhere. <clears throat> I don't know what happened. So we're we got new ones coming in. So we're gonna get, you know get to that. We're aiming for like I don't know high eights, maybe low nines on that, low nine nine hundreds. Today we are tuning Eduardo. Now this car looks amazing for the year. I love the color scheme. You know, just looks like. Not a you know not a nice or a good person drives it. That's the color scheme of black and black and red, which I love. Um, it is a front wheel drive. That's the only quibs that I have for it. Uh, but this has a history. So he's been suffering with this car for a long time. Uh, a couple of things that we had to do. Uh, fix all the leaks. He had the boost leak, exhaust leak. His downpipe was leaking. It was just crazy. I don't know what shop he took it to, but just just neglected. Um, he didn't have a cast can. We just made a well. We just got like a cheap Amazon just for the dyno. But he is going to put proper valve cover um, fittings and all that stuff. Then on the dyno, uh, we got up to like 400 with this previous turbo, and the turbo took a shit. just got a rebuild this is an FP black and uh, what else oh yeah one of his rock arm was frozen the rollers on them was frozen lifters won't bled right he had head work done by somebody else super noisy so we had to take all that out redo it um, did the timing redid the timing and now it's running great um, he had a link a DSM link before he converted to Evo I'm sorry um, uh, Haltech 1500 Elite uh, with the wideband, can wideband. 
and um, his fuel uh, was like a RC or whatever I forget like really oh yeah he had um, low Z FIC 1800 cc's or something we tried to work with it but the injectors were bad they then themselves were bad our choice was sending back to FIC because they're a lifetime warranty and get a fix or just upgrade so we just upgraded to the high Z ones and it immediately fixed all the issue. This car drives very smooth, like, you know, amazing. But <clears throat> when you hit it, obviously the front, the front wheel is gonna be uh, slipping. So today we're doing flex fuel tool on the Heltec and oh yeah, we did the uh, Walboro fuel pump in tank, 450. Um, so today we're gonna do uh, flex fuel on Heltec 1500 and let's see what we can get them. So this is the first run uh, at the beginning you see those squiggly lines on the bottom that's basically me pedaling because doing the dyno runs from before with the old turbo we realized that his tires don't really hook soon as the boost kicks in it slips a little on the dyno um, so I'm pedaling it anticipating that but he's making 360 on 22 23 psi and running a little rich so I'm gonna set that straight so we're gonna switch to speed just to show how the graph is and we'll go over when it spools uh, at the last uh, pull. So this is around 25 PSI and I'm not even throwing any timing at it, it's just basic stuff. Um, below 12 degrees at red line. Um, and now we're going to switch to E85, I think this is you know pretty good power for <clears throat> 93 and considering everything, especially his bottom end is stock and he's a front wheel drive. This is actually on lower boost. It's like at 23 pounds, and um, you know it's running great. The fuel is on point. Maybe uh, it could use a little bit of leaning out, but we're on the right track. This is on 27 psi and it's um, it's a bit rich, but we're gonna clean all that up. This did make more power. Um, the graph is a little smoother as well because I did uh, change the timing curve a little bit. This one was 28 PSI, um, I lowered the timing because I was upping the boost. And then um, just you know doing the fuel tuning, I did lean out a little bit still in the low 11s. For E85, you could go a little higher. Um, I'm gonna up the boost a little bit, but I am wary of the injector duty cycle. That's really like at 95%. I mean, I could increase the base pressure and get it to you know do a little bit more but this is a street car so 
I don't want to do all that. Same boost and fuel as before, just um, added a little bit of timing. Injector is definitely maxed out. Um, so we're just gonna add a little bit of timing and uh, finish up the tune. So these are his final numbers. Um, this is at 27, 28 PSI. I am pedaling it like I'm not even hitting it early. Just wanna go over the spool a little bit. So those of you who are interested in this setup, I wouldn't say this is a you know super fast spooling turbo, but you know if for the street, it's pretty good for the power that it's capable of. Um, from the graph, you can see that uh, you know it's it's basically I'm hitting full throttle at 5,000 RPM. So let me show you on the previous one what happens if I hit it earlier. You see, as soon as the boost kicks in, the tire slips and the ECU gets freaky. I'm sorry, the dyno ECU. Um, so if I hold full throttle, like if I step on it, say at 3,000, I'll hit boost, full boost, like 20, 25 at 4,500 RPM. Um, so, you know, when it starts slipping, I can feel it, so I let go. So be mindful of your tires and wheels and suspension setup if you really want to, you know, uh, you know, make your car fast. You know, slipping is not being fast. So be mindful of that. This was a great project. Um, you know, Edward kind of suffered with the car. I feel there's more to do when you know time is right. There's some recommendations I made like uh, we really need to work at the valve. Uh, train on this car we just bled the system but he has zero lick zero tick uh, lifters GSCs sometimes they're not zero tick um, and you know we need to take care of that um, you know basic maintenance just he just has to keep it up wheels and tires combination I would definitely change all that uh, for sure it's not working I think even at low level and then down the line maybe uh, upgrade the injectors and build the bottom end Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the love. It means a lot. This is, um, you know, it's a privilege to have this channel and reach out to so many people. So many people will be reaching out to me. Keep sending me those loves. It does really motivate. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, be kind.